So in this video, we will look at some special manifestations of the first law. Uh, as we discussed in the previous video, we um, defined the first law, we saw how we arrived at the first law and in this class we will look at some important manifestations of this first law, right. So um, what is the first law again? So we write that as delta E system is equal to E in minus E out. Right. So, this is energy coming into the system, this is energy going out of the system and this is the change in energy of the system. Right. So, which means that if my system looks like this, um, I have to then uh, define if my system looks like this. then I have to look for E in and E out only at the boundaries, right. So I have to look for energy entering the system, energy leaving the system, which means I have to look at only the boundary, right. And delta E system, I have to look at what is happening inside, right. Where is the energy changing inside the system, right. And so uh, we already saw that energy of a system can have three different ways. So energy of a system is uh, the macroscopic energy plus the kinetic energy, uh, sorry, macroscopic energy is consisting of the kinetic and the potential energies and uh, the internal energy being the microscopic energy, right. So the, which means that delta E of a system should be equal to delta U system plus delta Ke plus delta Pe. I'm going to drop the system um, so subscript here. So it's delta U plus delta Ke plus delta Pe. Right. So I'm going to write that out. Right. So delta U plus delta Ke plus delta Pe is equal to E in minus E out, right. So this is what I get and uh, for a closed system, energy entering and energy leaving can only happen via two interactions that is either a heat interaction or a work interaction, right. So which means that I have only heat or work interaction, right. And here we will define a sign convention and that is uh, heat entering the system is positive and work done by the system is positive. Right. So this sign convention is purely by choice, but it allows us common language that we can talk to each other, right. Why this uh, terminology or why this particular sign convention and not the opposite? It is purely because of the way thermodynamics evolved. Remember that thermodynamics evolved as a discipline that is trying to get maximum work done from a system uh, by inputting the minimum possible thermal energy or heat, right. So therefore, heat entering the system is positive, work done by the system is positive and so uh, if there are only so for a closed system uh, 
I can write uh, delta u plus delta ke plus delta p e equals q minus w. Why? This is energy entering and energy leaving and uh, remembering that q entering is positive, w leaving or work done by the system is positive, then I write that as q minus w, right. So, uh, you might ask what happens if heat in a particular problem or in a particular situation is heat is not entering a system but leaving a system, right. In that case, this will become negative, right. And um, let us suppose that we are doing work on the system in some situations, then W becomes negative, right. But by default, uh, heat uh, when it is entering a system is positive, is taken as positive, that is the sign convention and W uh, which is work done by the system is taken as positive, right. And uh, in a system where the delta K E and the delta P E, the changes are negligible, um, are each much less than delta U, uh, right. So, where um, these, the changes in kinetic and potential energies can be neglected, such a system is called a stationary system. right then uh, for a closed stationary system i can write delta u then is equal to q minus w right and this is only for a closed stationary system. If I have delta K E becoming important or delta P E becoming important, then I have to account for this on the left hand side, right. So, delta U is equal to uh, Q minus W, right. Now, this is um, the uh, manifestation of the first law, right. This is not the first law, but one of the manifestations of the first law right. And this has important implications just by these three very simple looking terms, I still have quite a bit of importance attached to this. So, for example, let us say that uh, Q is 0 and W is 0, right. So, I have 0 on the right hand side which means that I have to have delta U equal to 0. What does that mean? That means that if I have an isolated system, and uh, that this system does not have any heat or work interactions, it is a closed system that also does not have any heat or work interactions with the surroundings, it is an isolated system, right. I cannot have any change in internal energy. You might say that is kind of trivial, but imagine that you have for example, a system that is uh, let us say isolated, but has some kind of. Um, so, uh, let us say I have a system which has a mixture of methane and oxygen, right and it is insulated no heat interactions and it is um, it does not have any work interactions with the outside, it is delta U cannot change, right. Does that mean chemical reactions cannot take place? You know that such a system if it has the right kind of mixture, um, then it, uh, it can potentially react, right and you can have this reaction going on. You know that this will be an explosive reaction inside a closed vessel that does not have change in volume, right. So, you can you know that uh, this will form CO2 uh, plus uh, 2H2O, right. So, this is um, 2, right. Or if you have a mixture of hydrogen and uh, oxygen, you can have you can have that reaction, right. So, how come then um, all these chemical reactions which are 
thought of as releasing heat, right? We talk about chemical reactions that release heat, for example, that's terminology that is used, right? So all these reactions seem to be happening, a lot may be happening inside, but yet this equation tells me that the internal energy cannot change, right? What is really happening? What is really happening is we know that the internal energy is um, sensible, latent, chemical, and nuclear, right? So what's happening here? When this reaction takes place, the chemical bond energy, some of the chemical bond energy gets converted to a sensible energy, which means that its temperature goes up and uh, the average velocities of the molecules inside that box goes up, which means that the translational, the rotational and the vibrational and the electronic energy levels go up, right? Um, so, uh, but the total internal energy cannot change. Why? Because Q is 0, W is 0, delta U has got to be 0 and it does not change. And this is something that is very profound, right? Even though we have an isolated system, I can have a chemical explosion inside. I can even have a nuclear explosion inside. If I have really an isolated system, I can have a nuclear explosion, I can have a chemical reaction, I can have any phenomena occurring inside that system and yet I will have no change in its internal energy. All I will have is an exchange between these four types of energies within the overall umbrella of an internal energy, right? 